Hey guys, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools channel. And if you're new to the channel, nice to meet you. Now, if you don't have one of these laying around, a miter saw to cut your material, which I think everybody should have if you're into DIY or home decor or home improvement. If you don't have one of these, well, there's other alternatives, okay? For instance, this is a miter box, okay? This is great for cutting angles in wood, all right? Now, it takes a little bit more manpower, but they're great to have around in case you can't afford one of these or you don't have one yet. So today we're gonna to talk about how to use one of these things. So stick around and I'll see you right after this. Okay guys, they have several types of miter boxes on the market. This is a Stanley model, one of the most basic models that you'll find in your local hardware store around the corner. But they also have wooden miter boxes, they have metal miter boxes, uh, they have miter boxes that allow you to make even more precision angle cuts in your wood, okay? So you can go and do your research on the different types of miter boxes. But today we're just gonna talk about this basic miter box here and uh, how it's configured and how you can use it. So. As you can see, uh, this miter box is a, a plastic miter box. So that makes it very, you know, easy to carry around. It's not that big. Uh, it's about, let me see here. Uh, let's see, it's about 14 inches. Uh, it's about 14 inches long and about six and a half inches wide. So it's very portable. It's, you know, you can carry it onto the job site you can store it away, tuck it in a, on a shelf somewhere. It's not a big cumbersome tool here. It's pretty lightweight, plastic, and uh, you know it's a very convenient tool to have around if you don't have a miter saw or you're not even inclined to use a miter saw. Okay guys, let's look at how this miter box is configured. Uh, first thing you wanna know is that this particular model allows you to make three basic angle cuts. A 90 degree cut, which is 90 degrees here. A 22.5 degree cut, which is that way. And a 45 degree cut, which is that way. And if you're wondering, I took a marker and I darkened the numbers next to each angle to make it more visible for you guys, okay? But the numbers do come embossed on the plastic. They're just not that visible, so that's why I did that. All right, guys? Okay, now on the base of the miter box, you're gonna see all of these holes here. What are those holes for? Well, they're there to accommodate these here, okay? These right here. These are called cam pins. Now, why are they called cam pins? Well, let's look at the shape of these. You see how they're shaped? They're not perfect circles, right? They're not perfect cylinders. They're shaped like cams on a uh, camshaft in a car. And we'll see how that works in a second. So what you would do is you would take your material, your wood, for instance, uh, and then you take the cam pin, place it in one of the holes. It's not going to go in that hole right there, right? Because it can't fit because the wood cuts off a portion of the opening of that hole. So let's go to the next hole over and we place the cam pin in there. And because of the shape of the cam pin, you turn it and it actually tightens onto the wood like that, right? And it holds the wood in place, right? So that's the purpose of the cam pin, right? So let's put this one here. Well, not there, let's put it there. And you see how it butts up against the wood, holds it in place, the wood's not going anywhere. You can shake it, it's not coming out. So, so that's why the pins are designed like cams in a camshaft. Okay, this miter box also allows you to fasten the box itself onto a surface by way of these holes on opposite ends here, okay? You can uh, take some screws or a screw and screw it into uh, these holes onto a surface and fasten the miter box onto the surface permanently or temporarily if you want to. Also, these, these two flaps here, 
uh, they're used to allow you to clamp the miter box onto the surface as well. So you can take your clamp like this one and just uh, put it onto the side flap and just tighten it onto the surface. Take your other clamp and do the same. And your miter box is not going anywhere either. So that's the purpose of those flaps and those holes on the side, right? Okay guys, I placed a piece of wood in the miter box and I used my cam pins to keep the wood in place, right? So this slot right here, which I didn't mention earlier, is another 45 degree slot and it allows you to make a 45 degree bevel cut in your wood, okay? So let's do that to give a demonstration of how the miter box works in that fashion. So I'll take my saw. Okay guys, the miter box allowed me to make a perfect 45 degree bevel cut, okay? So, it looks like a good miter joint. That's a perfect 90 degree angle here. Okay, so I'm going to turn this cam pin this way so this portion of the cam pin won't be in the way when I make the complementary 45 degree angle cut. Okay, so you may be wondering, how does the saw not cut into the plastic? Well, they designed the saw with this metal strip along the top of the saw blade, okay? So when you insert the saw into the slot, say for instance, this 45 degree slot, that metal ridge stops the saw right there. So it does not descend further than a certain distance down. And there's a small, slight space where the saw does not touch the plastic and the saw cannot go any further. So that's how they preserve the lifespan of your miter box. Otherwise, it wouldn't be any good with a miter box that's cut in half by your saw. But let's say you make your own miter box at home, which some people do. Well, what you wanna do is place a piece of wood under your material before you cut. Okay guys, remember the old adage, measure twice, cut once. So you may wanna take something like a square to score the lines on your material before you place it in the miter box because you wanna make sure that you get that accurate cut the first time. I think miter boxes are great tools to have in your tool arsenal, even basic miter boxes like this one, especially if you don't like power tools. Hey guys, if you learned something today, hit that like and subscribe button and that notification bell for more videos just like this. And you guys have a great one. See you in the next video.